Elter, Integrated European Long-Term Ecosystem, Critical Zone, and Socioecological Research. My name's Will. I think I've met most people, maybe once or twice. Uh, in the in the uh, in the meeting, but yeah, like I said yesterday, I'm a colleague of Jan's, uh, and this has been my my magnum opus. This is what I've been working on for a lot of the um the Elta projects. So that is the cookie cutting tool for statistical data. So we sent out a link to a uh, to a video um, for the meeting, but just as to kind of very briefly recap. Um, when we're looking at national data sets and kind of, you know, transnational European data sets, um, it's always nice to have these data sets because they are collected and they're harmonized and they're kind of quality checked and blah, blah, blah from the kind of national and international authorities. So they're quite valuable sources of data. But if we're doing site based research, this is my, my staple diagram of the Cairngorms. Um, if we're doing site-based research, then probably these data sets aren't going to kind of tidily, tidily fit our sites. So on the left, there's a um, there's some air cover quality raster data, which we can see kind of it covers the whole UK, but the Cairngorms is just this little this little red part. But then mainly of interest to us is the statistical data sets as well. They're often grouped by kind of county or province or you know depending on the country. Um, and again, with the Cairn goals, we can see this uh, this uh, little diagram where the different councils, I think that's right, Jan, tell me if it's not councils, but I think these are Scottish councils. Um, the Cairn goal sits slap dab in the middle of about five of them. So it's not easy to get a, just a, you know, a figure uh, or some figures for, for our site that we might be interested in. This was, this was kind of the original mission mission brief uh, and then to that end uh, we developed this cookie cutting tool so the idea of it is that we can take any of our um, LTSER platforms so again there's a little uh, there's some boundaries of the Eisenvorten uh, National Park um, and we could take some data that's yes should contain some data for our park or our site or whatever we want to call it but also is going to contain a lot of other kind of junk uh, we can have this into kind of CSV or Excel format, so, you know, either is fine. Uh, and provided it's formatted kind of nicely, I'll come back to that a bit later. But the gist of it is that we can then combine these two and produce some outputs roughly like this. So this is kind of a, a little map of population density uh, cropped to the Ison Roads and platform. Um, and you can see there's one very bright region right up at the top, and then the rest is sort of much less populated. And the actual data itself looks roughly like this. We just have a list of kind of sites, uh, sorry, a list of kind of zones. So in this case, this data was grouped by NUTS3 regions. So each NUTS3 region that sits within that park uh, then gets included in the output data set along with some extra details, like what's it called? how much of it sits within the park, blah, 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 blah. So that was the gist of the cookie cutter. Um, there's a much more detailed explanation on YouTube, like, like I mentioned. And I'm sure you all watched uh, watched this video before coming here, so that, but, you know, just in case. Uh, yeah, we had a quick little recap. So, um, a few notes just about, about kind of where we're at with this. Um, is that to begin with, there were only a few, I think there were maybe five, possibly. I think there were five LTSER platforms that were supported, but if you wanted to, if you were based at a different site, you're out of luck. It's not true anymore. Uh, now um, now that there's, a, there's an integration with dimes.org set up. So if your, if your platform is both on dimes, and if it has a, a shape file uploaded, which describes the kind of the, the boundaries, um, then we can use, you can use your, your, your platform and data for your platform uh, with the tool now. And similarly, uh, originally it was kind of restricted to um, just using the, the standard 
uh, Eurostat levels of nuts zero, nuts one, nuts two, nuts three. Um, for so if your data wasn't grouped by those, if it was at local administrative unit level, for example, if it was European data, or if it was at some uh, some national statistical level. So Scotland, we had a look at Scotland, and it's it's completely different to the how the Eurostat data is grouped. Again, previously you were a bit out of luck, but now we've we've sort of developed it to the point where actually uh, we can just drop in a shape file that describes those statistical regions, and then Bob's your uncle, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to use those. So yeah, much more free in terms of which sites and data zones we're using. The other thing is that I'm quite pleased with is that the documentation is finished. So there's a screenshot of that just here. Um, there's quite detailed documentation. I'm a big believer in good documentation. So I thought I would finally practice what I preach and I just wrote everything down about cookie cutter in exquisite detail. So this is just a screenshot of the tutorial, which is probably the most interesting um, piece of documentation. Um, it is a sort of 10 to 15 minute exercise, maybe, that it just guides you through the process of sort of what all the different knobs and buttons do and how to go through and use them, which I'll, I'll sort of touch on later as well. But this exists and, you know, somebody please read it so I don't feel like I wasted my time. Okay. Um, some of the issues that we've come across so far, it's not all been sort of perfect. So the first issue that we identified sort of earlier this year is, is to do with the kind of the fit. So as far as different LTSER platforms go, they're all different shapes and sizes. Um, and in the case of a place like Atelier Alps, for instance, in France, um, this is the kind of the full, full Atelier Alps region on the left, plotted in red. And you can see that in blue, there are kind of some, some, uh, some nuts three regions being plotted. Um, and as far as the kind of the ratio of area inside and outside, um, the, 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 the platform goes, it's, it's quite good. About half of that blue area actually sits within the, uh, within the, the boundaries. So, you know, feels like that's probably a relatively good candidate in terms of being able to take the data for those and apply it with some modifications to the, uh, to the platform, but others, not so much. So on the right hand side, we have uh, Trnava in Slovakia, where there's only two relevant regions that, um, that are kind of sitting within that those boundaries, but only about 6% of those regions at all sit within Trnava itself. You can see that kind of red shape is really just a quite a small amount of that. That blue area, which kind of, you know, intuitively feels a bit like, well, how accurate is any of this data going to be anyway? Um, one thing you will notice actually for both of them is that it looks quite a lot like those red boundary lines should really be falling along the boundaries of different zones. This little, I don't know if you can see the mouse pointer, but this, um, this kind of blue zone here, I believe is just a zone in its own right. The boundary between that one and this one runs right along the edges of the park. Ditto for Trinava. You can see these two. Uh, the boundary for them runs right along this little red line uh, of the park's outlines. And so it feels a little bit like, well, are these are these supposed to actually be, are these boundary lines supposed to match? Uh, and actually, really, should there just be this one zone here? Should some of these zones on the right be trimmed up for the for the Atelier Alps? Um, it feels like there's, for all of the parks, really, uh, there's quite a few of these kind of dubious intersections where we think, well, actually, is that supposed to be there? Does, does that really sit within the boundaries? A lot of intersections with sort of, 0.01% overlaps where we've, it's it's probably just a slight difference in the shape files. You know, we define the boundary of 
these countries like this, somebody defines it like that. And so because of these kind of inconsistencies between the data sets, we're getting these kind of areas included that shouldn't be included. So some of them are pretty obvious, like France, for instance, a lot of some of these are in are in Italy or Switzerland on the right hand side, where you know we can pretty safely say that's probably what happens. But how do we kind of deal with this, you know, in future? Do we do we just get them to be manually reviewed by all of the, the platform owners? Do we just set a particular threshold and say, well, if it's not one percent of the area it's sat within, then just just forget about it. It's not worth it. Don't know. Open to discussion. This is something that we've already highlighted. Uh, and another thing that we've come across is, um, yes, it's all very well to take the kind of the full data set value. So for the Cairngorms, for instance, we can say, OK, well, for now, let's just take the whatever data from the the Highland Council, Moray, mm -hmm. Aberdeenshire, Angus, and Perth and Kinross, and we'll somehow combine it later into some figures for the for the Cairngorms itself. Well, we've, we're getting to the territory where we're having to actually start doing that, and it's not sort of quite so not quite so simple as you might think uh, in terms of how how we best actually do this. So, for instance, this kind of really crops up as well if you're comparing particular types of data. So anything where it's to do with land area, land use or land cover, all this kind of stuff um, works pretty well. Generally, if you look at the area, you can say, oh, well, roughly half of this council, Aberdeenshire, is farmland and roughly half of it sits within the Cairngorm. So, OK, roughly a quarter maybe might be as an estimate. That kind of makes sense in a way. It's imprecise, but it makes sense. But um, other things like life expectancy can't don't doesn't the same kind of reasoning doesn't really work. You know, if the average life expectancy in Moray is eighty two, then it probably isn't. But just you know, uh, it might be higher. I don't know. But if it is, you know, you can't say, well, you know, about half of Moray sits within the Cairngorms. So maybe that bit of the Cairngorms has a life expectancy of 40. You know, it just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. So we're, we're kind of looking at sort of alternative ways to do this um, cookie cutting algorithm as well on the input data sets. Uh, and any kind of geostatisticians that might be there, just give me a shout because uh, I'm sure you'll be able to do it much more sensibly than I will. But yeah, this is just another thing that we're kind of kind of looking at at the minute. Okay. So moving on anyway. Um, so for today, um, as a kind of case study, a sort of a, a pilot run with the tool, um, the, the, it kind of is already up and running as a kind of a pilot service for, for the RI. And I'll come back to where that is and how to access it in a little bit but for now i just want to talk a little bit about these um eurostat parameters that we that we've already already processed so for the six pilot elta ltser platforms it's a bit of a mouthful um which are atelier elves brilo islands in romania cairngorms doniana eisenwoods and Trinava. Um, for those six platforms, um, we took three of the ELTA standard observations, which we'll also come back to a little bit in this talk about Eurostat. But we took three of those slightly at random. We took GDP per capita, uh, area under tillage, and population density. Um, and we took all three of those and tried to sort of produce a kind of a full picture for each of those six platforms. Because all three of those data sets, cover the whole of Europe. So they make quite a nice starting point uh, for comparison across sites because, because they cover the whole of Europe, all six of those platforms are in Europe. So we know there's going to be data for, for all of them. So we took those three parameters and then it went sort of roughly like this. So the three data sets look, you know, they're just spreadsheets essentially. Um, where crucially they're all kind of split by different um, 
they're all at different levels of precision actually one is at the nuts two level i think that's area under tillage one's at the nuts three level which must be i think the gdp data because the population density data is at the uh, the local administrative units level so they're kind of most precise so those three data sets um we threw them into data labs which is where this quick cutting tool sits at the minute um and then based off of the link to dimes uh, we then got for each platform we got those same three data sets but we got them reduced uh, into just the relevant um just just the relevant parts for the for the different platforms and we also uh, whoops i double clicked we also uh produced some maps as well so for the Cairngorms national park for instance um the area under tillage we've got this kind of linear plot the data runs from roughly 2005 to 2013 and so we got these kind of chronological plots where you can see from 2005 to 2007 the area in the sort of southwest south easty kind of corners going up uh, and then wool shoots way up for 2010, relatively speaking, and a little bit more for 2013, um, which kind of gives you a little bit of an idea that, on the whole, relatively slowly, but the area under tillage is kind of increasing. We can kind of just see that at a glance. So this is for every site as well. I'm not going to, I mean, I can show sort of briefly all of them if, if people are interested, but I'll also post a link to the data uh, right at the end. Which is now actually uh, as far as the, uh, the the slides go. So there's a huge bunch of links here. Um, just the the interesting ones. Yeah, those three parameters, the data and the visualizations are at this Google Drive location, which is just part of the Alta Plus um, Google Drive. So hopefully you should all have access. Um, there's this YouTube video which introduces the tool a bit more. An introduction to data labs, which I'll actually just summarize now, but if you want to see more later, definitely have a look at this, uh, this video. The source code, so all of the source code for the uh, tool is here, that includes the code and both and the documentation as well. There's also a direct link to the tutorial if you just want to beeline it straight for that because you don't care about the coding. And then some a link to the apps as well, which I'll just quickly go through. Whoops, not so quickly go through now anyway, just while we're here. Uh, and then I guess maybe open to the discussion possibly. So uh, if I just alt tab it out into the labs. So yeah, we can maybe send this round or I don't know if the slides will be available, but this is the URL um, for data labs. So just very briefly on labs, this is I think most people should have seen this, but this is the kind of collaborative um, area for, for development of, you know, code, notebooks, workflows, whatever, uh, for Elta. So it's all based off of Jupyter's notebooks. Um, and essentially, yeah, if you go to this place, create an account, I've already had a few emails through for account creation, some of them I only saw sort of yesterday evening, so sorry, but I've set everybody up now. But basically, yeah, if you go to this URL, you just create an account with your email, and then you just let me know that you've done that. Um, I'll post my email address if anyone doesn't have it. And I'll let you into this Elta RI uh, project. So again, I won't go into too much detail, but the gist of it is that this notebook section is where all of the stuff is being developed for for the project, um, any files that are relevant sit within the storage places. Um, but the kind of important thing for us is this sites tab on the left. Uh, this sites tab um, is where you should always be able to see this cookie cutter. And this is this is it for now. It will it will eventually evolve into something more sophisticated, probably. Um, but if you just click on that open link, and you can even just bookmark this this URL eventually. Um, then this takes you to the tool itself. If you would like to try your own data sets or just have a go with it or follow through the tutorial, uh, which is in the documentation in this link, documentation, tutorials, use introduction. If you want to follow through this tutorial, then you can go through that uh, with, with this, or if you just want to put your own data sets in, 
uh, you can you can do that as well. I won't kind of explain how everything works here, but you know, you can upload data. Oh, it's going somewhere else. I'll just quickly uh, run through. Test it. Um, you can upload your own data, um, and then you can choose different alpha sites. So the six platforms are all here for now, but you also if you want to add a new one in, you can just find your Dimes ID, paste that in, and then it will just add it to the, to the options. And yeah, you can play around with the visualization. So I won't go any further than that. Uh, okay, so that's um, that's really most of what I wanted to, to kind of go through. Um, 